Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're taking a look at a new and improved cooler from Game Max. This is the Game Max Iceberg 360 Infinity Edition. Keep watching to find out more. Now, you're possibly wondering why I emphasized the Iceberg at the beginning, and there is a very good reason for this, because there are numerous Iceberg models available. But this is the Berg, spelt with a U rather than an E. The previous version of the Iceberg was actually a pretty decent cooler, and I think we've reviewed it previously on the channel. But this is the new and improved version, and this is the Infinity version. So we have Infinity lighting on both the pump head and also the addressable RGB fans. Now something which I'm really glad to see on this is the new improved version. We've got some really nice connectivity, nice and easy to set up. And the fans themselves have actually, Game Max have surpassed themselves. I'm not sure what's happened. Someone's slipped something in their tea, perhaps. And the fans actually on the cooler are fantastic. They're a new design, seven blades, and there is a outer ring to keep in some of that static pressure. When it comes to RPMs, we're looking at between 800 and 2000 RPM. So nice and fast for an AIO radiator. And you're probably thinking 800 RPM. Mm, is that gonna be noisy? Well, I can say no, definitely not. They're currently running in the machine behind me, as you can see, and I was actually so impressed with it, I've kept it in the machine for the time being. Although, coming up soon, we will be going over some new stuff from Game Max, including their new Infinity case. So it only seems right that I take that cooler out, being this is part of the Infinity range, and we'll put it in that case when we do the review on that. Also, in this video, there won't be any specific benchmarks as such. I'm gonna give you a rough idea of how it performs but we will be doing a group test for a whole bunch of 360 mil rads. So if you wanna see how that goes, obviously make sure you're subscribed, click on the ding-a-ling button as well, and you'll be notified of future video releases. So for those of you who just come along and wanna see what the performance is like, essentially this beats the Noctua D15, which is what I've actually had in there previously, by about five degrees, which is excellent for a Ryzen 7 7700X. And this is with either the limits kind of left to run wild, Whereas normally you see the notch will hit around about 95 degrees. This tops out at 89, so about six degrees cooler than a notch with D15, and actually considerably cheaper. This at the moment in the UK retails for just under 75 pounds. Uh, links will be provided in the video description. Whereas the notch you're looking at anywhere between 90 to 100. So potentially this could save you an absolute ton of money. And obviously it looks a lot nicer because you've got all those infinity mirrors and all that kind of good stuff. So anyway, let's take a look at the packaging now, go through the bits and pieces, the installation. There is a slight caveat for the installation, which I feel I should mention. I will be mentioning this directly to Game Max UK. I'm not too sure if it's gonna be in all of the coolers, but I did notice there is an error in the actual installation. Now, also I won't be showing you an installation on this in this video. We will be doing a separate installation video for both AM4, AM5, and also Intel sockets in a separate video because I think it's gonna be a little bit longer and need some explanation. So I'm omitting that from this particular video. So looking at the packaging, you can pretty much tell what you're gonna get. So you get a 360 mil AIO. You also get it in black. There doesn't appear to be a white version at present, which is a little bit of a shame, but potentially there will be in the following weeks, months, etc. Uh, it's got the infinity fans on there. Again, this is a new design. So these are actually really decent fans. I hate to say it, but some Game Max fans, they are a little bit on the cheap side, and obviously, along with being cheap, you don't always get the best performance, but these are a step in the right direction. I think they've taken a few leaves out of the Arctic book, and if you've seen the Arctic P12 AERGBs, they look very similar. They've, uh, well, I won't go into that too much. So this is the Iceberg 360, 360mm AIO, ARGB liquid cooler, etc. Supports all your usual standards, so as long as you've got a 5 volt 3 pin addressable RGB header on your motherboard or in your case or whatever, then you can synchronize that up, no problems at all. You've also got that really nice Infinity pump head as well with the Infinity logo. It has got the Game Max logo on it, but it is a kind of tiger or a lion's head, so it's kind of pretty nondescript. So if you are potentially getting this to put into a build and you're a little bit concerned about that, isn't the end of the world. Uh, I think it looks absolutely fine. They do make a thing here about saying it supports Intel 13th gen. It will support 14th gen as well when that refresh comes out shortly. And it pretty much does most of the other sockets. So AM3, AM4 and AM5, I'm glad to say. It's a long time since I've seen a cooler recently. 
actually supporting AM3 all the way through to AM5. So yeah, particularly impressed with that. On the Intel side of things, you're looking at the uh, LGA 11 5X range all the way through to the 14th gen, like we said there. On the top of the box, it makes some mentions about some of the key features. Again, we talked about most of that in there. Uh, PWM fans, 800 to 2000 RPMs, as we said. Uh, free of maintenance does seem to be the case. It is an enclosed AIO, so you shouldn't have to touch anything anyway. Not so much a feature, more of a thing that you'd expect, but anyway. Uh, high quality water pump. Now, something I should mention about the water pump, actually. I've had this running in the system, and there doesn't appear to be any way of controlling the speed of the water pump. It does connect to the motherboard via a three-pin connector, so DC control. And actually, in my MSI center, I did try and make some modifications to it, and it seems that the pump is continuously going at uh, 2400 RPM. It doesn't appear to deviate from that at all. So the noise level is actually absolutely fine. It's not, um, how can I put it? You can hear it, it's on, and you can hear that it's actually doing something, but it's not intrusive. If I'm completely silent, you may be able to pick it up. I don't think you will, because I'm really sensitive about fan noises, and I can just about hear it over the case fan. So see if you can hear it. It is very quiet, and that is with the system running um, as it would normally. So, yeah, to me, it's absolutely fine. I would be happy to put this in any system. It doesn't make a great deal of noise at all. When the fans ramp up at 2,000 RPM, clearly it's going to make some noise. There's no real way of getting around that. Realistically, anything up to about 1,500 RPM, and it's, I wouldn't say it's silent, but it's not intrusive. Uh, looking on the back of the box, go through some of the specifications. So I'll give you some close-ups of that so you can check it out for yourselves. One of the key things I think for this personally is the fact that the radiator sizing. So we're looking at 397 millimeters in total length. So this is gonna fit into a lot of cases where others may struggle. You do quite often find these AIOs reaching kind of 400 mil, 405 mil because of the end pipes, etc. 397 should give you pretty decent compatibility with a wide range of cases. So that's enough about the packaging. Let's take a look at what you actually get inside the box. So obviously clearly you're gonna get installation uh, instructions, all that kind of stuff, all your hardware. The actual manual itself, quite impressed. Very easy to follow, uh, done in very clear typeface on a very contrasting background. So uh, even if you are partially sighted, you should be able to see this actually pretty well. And it's dual sided, so it tells you about the package contents and gives you like blown up things of it. So yeah, all good. The thing I was more concerned about, if I can find it now, is for the uh, AMD mounting system. So it's saying on there, there is a specific section. Um, I'm gonna give you a close-up of this so you can see it properly. But it does say that the clips actually go in the opposite way round. Now I actually assembled it, got it ready to go into the system, put it in. I was, I even just putting it together, it was like, no, this just feels wrong, it's way too big. So literally, the, uh, the little L bracket which screws in just turn it around 180 degrees so it faces inwards. It's a very simple thing. I will make sure that uh, Game Max UK are aware of this, whether or not they can update it in the manuals. There's clearly gonna be others in the retail channels which we've got this instruction on. And uh, potentially I will make the video, like I said, and I will point that out. So if people are buying this and they're going to install it and they're kind of following the instructions, I would say word for word, but there's no words. But if you're following the instructions pictorially, and you're struggling, then yeah, that is what the problem is. So just flip that round 180 degrees and it fits absolutely perfectly. Another thing which I should mention as well, when you actually tighten up the screw for AM5 in particular, because it does have a slightly higher uh, axis on it, you don't need to do the screws up very tight at all. Just a couple of thumb turns is absolutely fine. Potentially with AM4, you might need to do the screws right the way up until you get a hard stop. You'll find with AM5, if you go to a, for a hard stop, you'll see the metal starting to bend. So if you start seeing the metal bend, that's enough, stop right there. Anyway, let's move on. So that is the instruction manual. Also included, you get all your hardware. So there's a separate bag for uh, AMD components, which you're probably seeing for some B-roll because I've already got it in the system. You also get a separate bag for Intel as well. So I like it, the fact they've all split it up. And there isn't actually a great deal here as well. It's pretty much mostly all done. There is a back plate. So if you are using the Intel sockets, then you will need to use this back plate with AMD systems, AM3, AM4, and AM5. Obviously, AM3 and AM4, the back plate is the AMD stock one, which comes with the motherboard, which if you undo the screws, it kind of falls off. With AM5, luckily, 
that is captive now so it can't fall off and yeah literally you just clip it on over the plastic lugs as you're possibly seeing from some b-roll so with this yeah adjusting it is a pretty straightforward so just pull those into the required position depending on your socket type which is clearly printed on there and even with my uh, somewhat tired eyes these days i can see it pretty well so you've got 775 11 5x uh, 1700 and also you have got the 1366 just double checking there because the light shining on it if you're using lga 1200 that is going to be the same as the 11 5x so if you're slightly concerned about that and you're using it on that platform uh, there is also a sticky pad that basically sticks onto the back of there to protect sorry that way around rather goes on that way to protect the back of the motherboard when you actually put it into your system that is for the intel side of things only you also get a little syringe of thermal compound i've actually used a different thermal compound because you never quite know really what this is there's no branding as such on it so i'll use an mx4 which we use for all our testing so it just makes things a little bit easier uh, also obviously taking a look at the radiator itself so you can see it's all actually pre-assembled the fans are actually on the unit itself already ready to go each one of the fans has two connections off it one of which is four pin pwm for that 800 to 2000 rpm spin rate and also you get the addressable rgb lead as well with all the pass-throughs fly leads etc so you can daisy chain them all up together which is absolutely great there's also a one to three way adapter for the pwm fans obviously three fans on this cooler so you plug all three into there plug the single pwm header into your motherboard into the cpu fan socket when it comes to the actual pump itself pump housing you've also got an addressable rgb connection coming off of that and a single dc three pin connection just plug that into your motherboard into the pump header if you don't have a pump header you can plug it into pretty much anything chassis fan or something just make sure you set it to 100 percent and dc control and you should be absolutely fine the white LEDs as well look really good on this. So if you are looking for that kind of monochrome look, really nice, very bright. And the infinity effect works quite well as well. You can't particularly see it in this particular setup. But if you've got one of those cases where you've got the side wall where you can put a 360 mil rad on that side section, then yeah, it's gonna look very cool indeed with that infinity effect, which is essentially just a mirror by it. So you can just see it repeated loads and loads of times. Something else as well, which they thought about, which actually was a complaint of mine on the previous Iceberg version, not the Berg version, the Berg version, and that was the fact that the pump head wasn't able to be rotated. So if you wanted to mount the pump head with a certain way, with the pipes on one side or the other, then potentially you'd be stuck with having your Game Max logo upside down, which is a real shame. So that has been completely addressed in this. The pump head itself is rotatable. It says 270 degrees on the box, but mine spins around 360, so I'm not sure if there's something wrong. It still seems to work, and all the lighting is as it should be. So yeah, absolutely fine. So what you want to know is, what is it actually like? Now, like I said, I've only tested it very briefly, and compared with the D15, and also the Johnsbo um, Pisa 5, which was in there as well, it beats both of those hands down. Obviously, the Noctua D15 is probably the one that is the most relevant being that that is normally the go-to cooler to beat. And also I would say, judging from my temperatures, even comparing with thermal takes, I think it was the TH360 ARGB we had in there previously. Um, yeah, the temperatures and the scoring are very similar to that in fact, and that costs considerably more. But when it comes to the D15, it beats it quite convincingly. We're getting about 300 points more in Cinebench uh, R23. It's not an exactly like-for-like -like system because I have been tweaking the system and there's been BIOS updates, so potentially that could hinder it as well. But like I said, we will be doing a full roundup on all of the 360mm AIAs that we've actually got here, of which there is about seven, I think, at the moment. It's getting ridiculous. So we will be doing a shootout on those and seeing which one is the best value for money, which one's the easiest to install, and all those kind of cool things. So if I was to give this a Mike's Unboxing rating out of 10, I've got to be honest with you, I've struggled to not give it a 10. The only thing which really kind of goes against it, in my opinion, is the instructions being slightly off. It's got to be an 8 or a 9 out of 10. It really has. It's pretty much got it all where it counts. It looks great. It sounds great. It's cheap. 75 quid for a 360mm AIO is very competitive pricing. The only thing that stops me giving it an absolute recommended 10 out of 10 is the fact that we don't know for longevity how long it's going to last and obviously the slight uh, 
ominous level of warranty on there. But otherwise, I think if you've got 75 quid to spend and you want an AIO radiator for your system, this is definitely worth a look. So there you go, there are my thoughts on the GameMax Iceberg 360 Infinity. Let me know what you think about this one in the comments section. I'd be interested to hear what your thoughts are. Would you consider putting a GameMax AIO in your system, given they are traditionally known as a more budget orientated brand? It certainly seems they're uh, up in their game a little bit. Anyway, that wraps things up. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.